Hello, Pod Posse. It's me, your host, Lindsay the Stager. I am here with Design Time from the Floor Up. And as you can see, for the first time ever, we have two people, Jim and Carla Billings with Copper Oak. Yay! Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. I'm so happy to see you guys. You guys are all the way from Minnesota. Yes, we are. Yep. Yes. I love that. I'm going there at the end of the month. Originally from Florida right here. I got her to come up and move up to Minnesota. Well, so. I, I was born yeah. in South America. And oh my God. And raised in Florida. And now where in Florida? Miami, um, Weston, several areas throughout Aventura, Sunny Isles Beach. So I lived in several areas. Yeah. Amazing. And now, uh, just to throw some numbers out at the pod posse, you have 30, I said 30,000 followers on Insta. Yes. And you guys have this like amazing company called Copper and Oak. Yes. And if I were going to tell everybody what that means and what you do, I think, I think it's that you both have full-time jobs and that you start your projects after five. Yes. Which means that's like when the workday ends or you just start working when you start drinking. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> about right. right. That's about <laughs> right. Yes. It's amazing. <laughs> and so like we've got the Floridian and then we've got Jim that like convinces Carla to move to Minnesota. Yes. And then you guys have these like probably normal nine to five jobs. Yep. And then what happened? Well, um, we had to get a house to house all six of us and uh, walked into the house and said, this needs work. Hold on, Tim. <laughs> Who I, are these I'll other four people? You can't just drop that and then it doesn't have an explanation. Right. Exactly. Yes. So I have uh, two kids of my own and then Kyla I has two kids. So there's six of us in the house. Plus a dog. Are they all, what kind of dog? Burn doodle. A Bernie doodle. Yeah. And then in the children, are there boys and girls? Are they all boys? I have a boy and a girl and he has a boy and a girl. Yes. Mommy. Oh, damn it. It's like the break bunch. <laughs> and of. all over the board as far as ages go. So my son is soon to be eight. My daughter's soon to be 15. His. My, his, da my daughter's 17 and my son is 19. So. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And then if I were to move in with you guys, <laughs> <laughs> I would bring a three and a half year old boy okay. and an almost 10 year old going on 25 year old girl. That's about right. Wow. So we have like a, a whole plethora of craziness. And then you guys are going to like do projects after five. What is wrong with you? Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it may sound sick, but it's my form of relaxation. I... Oh, I, so this is you drinking. Yeah. After five. <laughs> no, I, I, I get caught up in doing this stuff and I just lose time. And I, it's, it's my meditation. It's our form of therapy, yeah. even though it sounds very yeah. odd to a lot of people. It genuinely oh. is our yeah. therapy. Yes. Yes. Well, before I start talking about what you guys are kind of famous for, I just wanted to point out that I do take some time when I'm planning my background. And as soon as we got on, Carla's like, oh, I love your backsplash. And I was like, oh, really? What backsplash? <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> It's gorgeous. I love it. Um, I just have to say that I am back in, as of only four months, our newly renovated home. So this is brand spanking new, mm -hmm. completely deliberate. You have every right. And we, <laughs> thank you. It was a <laughs> painstakingly terrible experience. But anyway, that's enough about me. Um, we copied Giada's kitchen. And so these are all different color gray Every single one, all a hundred and like, well, 900 of them are like, everyone is different, but we cover, we copied Giada's kitchen. Oh, very nice. Wow. Very nice. Have you guys ever done something like that where you see something and you're like, that's what we're going to do? Or do you come up with it right from your own minds? Well, I, a little bit yeah, a little bit of both. I 
take the space and just start designing for whatever we want in it. And then she takes inspiration from what she sees out online and hey, can you incorporate this into the design type of thing? So it's a little bit of, we don't, we don't copy anything that one for one per se, a lot of, yeah. it's, you know, a lot of it's original design. You know, That's amazing. And another sh- thing, because I was like, what? Then, I mean, then you have Shaker, which has been around for a hundred years. So that is kind yeah. of a good day. Well, when I was stalking your page earlier, I saw that you took on removing popcorn ceilings, which yeah. nobody does. <laughs> and you guys did it in like in a little box to catch the yeah. crap. Yes, yes. Can I, can I yeah. say something that I just think is hilarious? Yes. Um, so a lot of people use buckets, you know, this man comes up with guy. just the oddest <laughs> tools right off the bat. So the, the, the times that we've done the ceilings, he's come up with different boxes that <laughs> all have a handle self-made <laughs> out of tape. And it's just like a tray, a serving yeah. tray. And I'm like, how did genius? Yeah. yeah sort of Jim, you should incorporate something like that and sell it to Lowe's and Home Depot. You would be so rich and I will be right here waiting for a check. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great idea. No, and I saw your like the way that you like change the caulking thing. Don't get cocky. Yep. And the way you like put the black like marker on the thing, like yes. that's so that it should come like with that, you yes. know? I agree. I agree. But those are things I've learned over 30 years. You know, the first time I caught, there was too much cock. And then you refine it over time and come up with little tips. And also, don't you think, because I saw you doing this, but I work with contractors and my husband who does this. The finger is the best way to caulk that strip, right? Multi-purpose tool. That's what I, that's <laughs> what I labeled it. I labeled it as a multi-purpose tool because he does the glue with his finger. Yeah. He does the caulking with his finger. Yeah. Everything is with the finger. <laughs> yeah. If anybody was wondering, take your finger out of your ear or any other place yeah. and put it on the caulk. <laughs> that's. So Okay, so what I want to talk about first is apparently you guys have made a bit of a ruckus with your laundry room. What part of it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> the, tell us all. The, the crown molding? The crown, is that what we're talking crown about? Molding, the crown molding? <laughs> the beadboard ceiling we did. Removing soft. Well, do you see how I like had a little segue with the caulking yeah. into the crown molding and the ceiling? Yes. I mean, those are ingenious things. And, you know, I don't think that people think about putting shiplap on their ceiling enough. Well, because this is a fifth wall that nobody thinks about. And why not have some sort of visual element? There? I've said that since day one. I've like, people always look at the four walls. How about the, how about the sick wall? You know, they got the floor, the four walls and the ceiling. The, yeah. The, the sick surface. It's, it's often forgotten. Six. Yes. Sick surface. Yeah, it's often yeah. forgotten. So it's often forgotten. You look at these design magazines, it's like, that's gorgeous walls, but the ceiling's undone. So I've always looked at it as it needs to be finished, and it's not. But Jim and Carla, do you think that your laundry room is what got you guys so much exposure? Like, is this how Copper and Oak and the 30,000 followers started? Because that's like... yes. Most definitely. That's how it yeah, started. That's how it started. I, we started the account genuinely just to document and, you know, to share yeah. with everyone what we were doing. Yeah. We had no idea everybody was going to be so interested yeah. in all of the nitty gritty of the whole process. Right. And yes, it most definitely was a laundry room. It, that, that's what took yep. off. Yep. And then, you know, taking exterior grade beadboard and putting it on the ceiling. People don't do that. Actually, I have to say that what took off within the laundry room it's something that Jim to this day says, I don't understand how that's possible, but it's the truth, is the fact that we do true board and batten. Everybody yes. applies yes. board and batten with just the batten, not the boards. They put it right on the sheet rock. So, hold on. Yes. yes. Back your butts up. Back your butts yeah. right up and tell everybody who doesn't know what board and batten is. What is it? What are you talking about? How can you do it right or wrong? So sure. or authentically, we yes. showed it in several reels. And, you know, I, I guess it's even though I can sit here all day long and say it's the wrong way to do it. I'm not I'm not here to judge. You know, everybody yeah. to each his own. Everybody has their own oh, style. 
However, yeah. true born in Baton is applied exactly as the this word states. Board, board which is a panel, and baton, baton which is, is the, the vertical and, and, and the, the and the horizontal rails. Rails. So and and just to like make that into like more layman's terms, I want to just like explain as a designer, it's a visual element. It's to create texture on an otherwise just boring wall. It's to make something stand out. It's very trendy doing happening in the um, new construction um, designer homes, like a board and batten on the focal wall behind the bed in the master. Or a lot of people do it in their dining rooms. Or a lot of people have done it traditionally, you know, up to the chair rail level. But you guys did it in your laundry room, which is amazing. Yes. There's kind of, it's kind of funny because we, we did that because the kids kicked boots off there. And the sheetrock always gets destroyed. So as I, they're not going to destroy plywood and wood. I mean, if we put those on the walls at the lower level, so let them kick off their boots, let the dog get, you know, shake out. You can wipe it off the board and bend where sheetrock is going to degrade over time. So, right. Yeah. It's, uh, so did you guys like set up a little mudroom area or like, cause you're kicking your boots off. So I'm just trying to get a visual and I can't wait until you show your pictures so that we can see like a before and after. Yes. So what we did was, is that as soon as we saw that, if, if you would have seen it when we first walked in, yeah. it was just a complete disaster. It just didn't make any sense. We always knew that we wanted space because it was too small. Yeah. We wanted to open it up a bit more. We wanted to so hold on. How long did you live there before you decided that's it? Today's the day we're taking this down. Probably about, probably about three months. Actually. Okay, fine. Actually, mm-hmm. no. When we put the offer in, yeah. he was already in the computer designing. altering stuff and designing stuff based <laughs> on his pictures yeah. alone. Yeah. And I was okay. like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting like the picture now. I was, I had made up this visual that you guys had like lived in this house for 10 years, um, you merged the families. And then all of a sudden you were like, you know what? When are you going to change the laundry room? Because it's the pandemic and we don't have anything else to do. But that's not the case. No. 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 <laughs> We've lived here for two, two years. years. Yeah. Only. Yep. Yes. So then, I mean, I, I drew out the floor plans in CAD. Um, as soon as we bought the house, I drew it all out. And I started moving walls in the CAD. Hold on. Jim, you're also a CAD drawer? Yeah. I, that, I, yeah. I mean, that's like saying um, I'm also a pilot on the side. That's a major skill to have. A designer for 20 plus some years, yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. Did everybody hear that? A yeah. fellow designer. I'm not a CAD drawer, though. I have, like, none of that. So, yep. Yeah. Okay. It's... Go on. I'll stop. You tell. So no, I started drawing out the floor plans of the house and then started going, okay, that's a, not a load-bearing wall. That is a load-bearing wall. Which one can I move? Which one can't I move? Where can I go with this? Um, brought everything down to the sheetrock. Removed walls. Removed bifold door walls. Opened up the space. Soffits removed. Um she rocked it all back up and said, okay, this is our canvas. Where do we go from here? Um, tell Lindsay the funny part about how we were really not going to do the laundry room at all when yes. we started to do it. Yes. So, and it was like the first thing you did. Yes. <laughs> that is very much it. It was going to be the last thing, I love but it. When, we were, when we were doing the flooring, we were putting flooring throughout the house, and I didn't want any transitions going from one room to the other room. So as I was you know, going throughout the house, um, I got to the laundry room. And I stopped and I was like, listen, I'm going to have to do a lot of cuts around the walls that are currently here. Um, we knew that we wanted, we didn't like the current laundry room, but what if we, you know, what, what did we want to design here? Because I don't want to throw down flooring then to have to replace it, you know, a year later. So that's, let's look at this right now. So that's how the laundry room started is by the flooring getting to that that area and then we said okay let's just lay down the floor we'll take out the things that we don't like but we're only going to lay down the floor and yeah. we're going to live with the laundry room however yeah. it looks until we're done with the entire flooring yeah. on the main on the main level no that didn't happen I so that yeah right yeah, that didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> so let's hold on a second what yeah. kind of flooring did you lay down we put down lvp we put down um, nine by 60 uh, planks. 
Um, we chose it. We we were looking for a while because when we moved in, they had three different styles of flooring in here. They had carpet, linoleum, and pergol. All right. 20, all twenty six years old, <laughs> all mismatched in color. So we. Yeah, we went throughout and we're like, okay, what is the best thing for a family of six and a dog in Minnesota with salt and sand? So we started laying down, we went out, researched LVP, you know, and... Uh, so so Pod Posse, just to remind you, LVP stands for Luxury Vinyl Palank. Yes, yes. So It could also be LVT because they like to put tile oh, yes. instead of plank. Yes. Carry on. Yes. So we uh, we found a, a, a color that we liked. We found a pattern um, and just started ripping out the old flooring and systematically putting in new stuff. Throughout. He makes it. I mean, it's kind of like you've got to do the whole thing. It's a slippery slope. You can't just do the laundry room, which I think is what you found. Yes. We, we started in the dining room, putting it down, came across the front of the house into the office, and then started working back towards the kitchen and then... Because I didn't want transitions, we got to the laundry room. It's like, okay, I don't want to transition here, so let's design the laundry room. Needless to say, because he did not want anything to be wasted, he designed the entire main level first on his computer to ensure no transitions, no leftovers. Where the planks no, were going to be nothing. laid out and all that. So the planks are It's in... amazing. Yeah. And as a stager and a designer, I'm always trying to create more square footage where I'm going to pull it out of my you know what I have no idea but what you did is so smart with no transitions except for an entire flow of the same you added thousands of square feet not thousands but let's just say I understand because we didn't it feels that way it doesn't feel like you're walking yeah. in the next room it feels like an extension I, I mean, love it yeah so that's how that's how we came up to luxury vinyl planking and getting to the laundry room and, we and don't so then, so there's the laundry room, and then what happened? I'm thinking on your first level, there's a powder room. Yes, that was the next transition. That before we got the before we got to that room, we're like, okay, we're gonna have to pull out the toilet. We're gonna have to pull everything out. While we have everything out, looks like we're gonna have to build this. This was supposed to be a weekend project to do the powder room, a weekend project. Oh God, it turned How long in did it take. A week. It took a week. A week. Um, we are still, we finished it up maybe about a year ago, but now we're doing little touches. We're putting, uh, we just got done putting um, board and bat, or a uh, uh, ship lap on the ceiling and uh, wallpaper in the, on the walls. Yes. I love that. Oh, you're speaking to my soul. I did board and batten around my walls too. I did a black and white and gold. Oh, wow. like black paint above the white um, yeah. beadboard That's... and then just gold fixtures. But um, tell me about your wallpaper on the ceiling that really pumps Oh, we didn't do wallpaper on the ceiling. No, oh, we, didn't look, we didn't do it on the ceiling. We can't. Oh, you did the ship lap on the ceiling. We did, yeah. yeah, we did ship lap on the ceiling. Yeah. We can't really talk about the wallpaper because it's a collaboration that we're doing. Yes. And um, it's not ready yet. So we are. But it's so it's gorgeous. So pretty. It's about so pretty. Is done. But it's it's looking pretty. Yeah. Looking pretty. But but if if you could pick any room in the house that you would put wallpaper on the ceiling, would you? And where what room would it be? Like probably in the office. Yes. No. Probably office. office. What would bring... you put up there? Like planes? Oh no. I know. <laughs> you know what? That I never thought about it, but you know what? if we had to pick one room it'd be here, but I don't know what it'd be. Don't know. Not sure yet. Yeah, hmm. huh. but huh. you just gave me an idea. <laughs> <laughs> what about like planes, like airplanes on the ceiling? Wouldn't that be so cool? Like, like, actually, like an old, the, what? You actually, I'm sorry to interrupt you. The, um, you actually gave me an idea for my, my son's room. So planes I like on, that. Planes on the ceiling. That'd You're be welcome. <laughs> yes, you. Look at your floor right now. Is it the floor of your dreams? If it is. I think you should probably raise your standards. And if it's not... Floralee, 
your premier source for designer-inspired floor. Use Florally's live chat with real human beings to answer your flooring questions and even book a free in-home consultation. Don't forget, design starts from the floor up. And we're back. Um, hold on a second. What room... I know we're not going to like say too much, but what room are you talking about that that was what was missing is the wallpaper? Because I love that answer. The it's a solution. If you're missing something, yes. try wallpaper. Exactly. Yes. Hey, what? Whoa. Whoa. Darn it. Take us for a ride. <laughs> I know, right? Just, just didn't want you to get, you think I was predictable. Okay. Um. <laughs> is the one okay. them that we didn't think we, we didn't think we, we needed and we did. Yeah. It just came, it's coming out really When nice. we were done with it, as of six months ago, we like, God, this is really nice. And then we started looking into it and uh, an offer came up and we're like, maybe this is a perfect room. And we started putting it on the wall. It's like this actually just put that final fit and finish in the room. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Um... I love seeing things like where people go even further and they're like, I know, let's make the ceiling look like the top of a circus tent. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> not. That's, that's not. That our style. <laughs> our style. I might, might take some convincing. Not judging. Not judging. Whoever has done it. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is there's like so many more things that people just don't even think of. For, like when I walk into a restaurant, like Bar Taco, I love how they have hanging baskets upside down. Yeah. I'm like, yes, that is such a good way to like pull the ceiling down. And that is the attention Bring it together. Yeah, that's the attention to detail that we were talking about. We, the number one thing now that we see whenever we look at a catalog or a magazine is the ceiling. Yeah. And that is the first, he always tells me, look at how beautiful that room looks. Tell me what's missing. And I always say the ceiling because yeah. it's always completely bare. There's nothing there. Yeah. I love that we're talking about this because, like I said, it's so important and we need to cover it more. It is the sixth because we talk about floors, we talk about walls, we talk about focal, blah, 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 blah. But the ceilings, yes. So is that your most favorite thing to do now? Are you like focusing on that? Is that, or tell me if, what your favorite thing is. Removing the popcorn is not my favorite, but putting something up there that, you know, is neutral, but yet it's finished other than popcorn or knockdown, which you see in a lot of ceilings, something that seems like it's finished, that it's not typical. It's so, true. Yeah. It's not typical. typical. You walk into anybody's home, it doesn't matter the price tag of that home and you're not often going to see a finished ceiling. Right. Sometimes you are, yeah. but it's not the norm. What is our most favorite thing? I wouldn't say it's the ceiling. I think it's the final product though, whatever it is. I mean, Ooh. we designed it out. You know, I draw everything up in CAD. We tweak, you know, we tweak measurements here and there, but actually the most satisfying thing is the accomplishment when we walk away going, we did that and it turned out the way we wanted it to. Which is what happened with the laundry, laundry room and the and the powder bath now. So. Yeah. So what are your colors in the laundry room and the ba uh, powder room? So <laughs> the laundry room is the only area in the entire level that it has a different color. We try to maintain the same color, which is crushed ice by Sherwin William throughout the entire walls mm -hmm. of the main level. However, we wanted That's a, a good color. Yes. yes. And we wanted a certain feeling though for the laundry room. We wanted that calmness, fresh, yes. um, coziness yeah. at the same time. And we tried several greens. We knew we wanted a green and we weren't sure. And we kept trying and trying and trying until we found Oyster Bay, which yes. we- Oh, so Oyster Bay? Yes. Oyster Bay. That's West a good one. That's a good one. Yes. yes. We absolutely love it. We're going to try to experiment with, what is this, iron ore? Iron ore. On the, in the office here. It's all over. Wouldn't you love to be the person that names the paint? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I mean, that's like being a food critic. Yes. 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 <laughs> that would be really fun. 
Okay, so uh, different scenery change. Just wanted to make it interesting. Um, okay, we were talking about accents. <laughs> no, we weren't. <laughs> we were talking about um, the colors in the powder room. Yes. Yes. That's what I would like to know. So we have the Oyster Bay in the laundry room, which is a very calming green. We won. And what did you select? What? So we maintained the colors of crushed ice um, and pure Ex white, extra, extra white, white for the for the trim, the trim, and, the trim work. and the door. Um, however, with this wallpaper, it's pretty much bringing. I'll just tell you the tones. I'm not going to tell you the pattern because I can't yet. But it brings. It pulls the tones of the grays. It pulls the tones of the black yeah. in the fixtures, um, the whites in the trim work. It, it is genuinely something that we were like, even this morning we walked by, he even told, I have a habit. I don't know if this happens <laughs> to you, but I have a habit of closing bathroom doors. I have this thing where I shouldn't be watching a toilet or seeing a toilet as I'm going through <laughs> A hallway. hallway. I don't understand <laughs> why I need to do that. I find that like a little odd. And he's like, would you please just leave the bathroom door open? Because it's so gorgeous. It just, you know, wide. And I'm like, I have to see the toilet when I'm walking by. Don't look at the toilet. And he goes, just look at what we have now. It looks so pretty. And I, I had to agree. I said, you know what? Okay, fine. I'll leave the bathroom door open from now on. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I feel the same way. And in that um, that little bathroom that I was telling you that I did with the white beadboard and then the black paint above it, and then we did um, white large subway tiles with black grout and then all gold fixtures, guess what I did? Here it is. I needed a little something extra because every single time I walked by that door and I saw this white toilet seat against this beautiful awesome white beadboard and black paint and gold fixtures guess what i did this is so awesome ready black toilet seats oh really wow really we never thought of that that is really cool i didn't think of it i have to give credit to my um my husband's ex-wife who is still a member of our family and a fantastic friend of mine and like big time designer she's been on the podcast jamie mears she, she had it at her house and i was like damn it, why didn't I think of that? And she's like, just just do it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> that is very cool. But, a, but that's a good idea. That's another element that people don't think of, like the ceiling. Yes. Just think outside of the box. And, you know, it's kind of like um, that toilet seat was like accessories. Yes. Okay. You got to have the right accessories. Do you know what I mean? It is so true. It's just we'll to, a white thing there. We'll have to try it. We we'll try it. it. Yeah. Maybe okay, we'll do that. So let me ask you this. I am way over gray, even though you just saw my bay, my gray backsplash. Um, but crushed ice is reminding me of what I tried to incorporate, and that is I wanted to go the teeniest, tiniest hint of gray, but not, you know, like I, I am now calling agreeable gray disagreeable gray because I'm so over it. But um, I chose Eider White. And it's just the hint of teeny tiny little gray, teeny tiny little bit of beige. We call it a grige. Um, did you guys look at Eider White when you were looking at crushed ice? We, you know. There was one that was very close to it, but it wasn't that one. But I know exactly which one you're talking about. We, I think that. We were looking at reflective white for the trim. And then we were steered away from that because it takes five or six coats. And then, so we stuck with extra white. But for the color, um, I think we stayed a little bit more on the cooler side going with the crushed ice. And the reason for that is precisely because of what you just said. We didn't, we wanted a gray tone, but we didn't want it to get tired of it over time. I know, I know. We wanted it to- And here's a- Cool. Go ahead. Relax. Yeah. You know, we yeah. want it to be that, not in your face gray all the time. Yeah. Right. And another little tidbit, this is a good nugget for designers like us that maybe we weren't thinking of. Um, it actually came to me when I was trying to save some um, sellers money. They had to repaint everything. We had to remove wallpaper from 150,000 years ago. And we had to repaint 
5,000 square feet, which Oof. can get really expensive yes. when you do walls, trim, ceilings, the whole yes. Monty. Absolutely. So what I've started doing, and I just wanted to know if you had considered this in your trials and tribulations, painting the trim and the wall color the same in a um, neutral tone, neutral color, such as alabaster, which is a warm white. Have you guys considered doing that? So we have talked about it because I really love that. I've seen it quite often and it's very, very pretty. Even changing the sheen yeah. on the trim with the same color just gives us such a wow factor. We did that in the laundry room. And we did do that in yeah. the laundry room. There's three different sheens of the same color so in there. If you look, I know See, that that's such an interesting part. Nobody ever thinks about that. The sheen changes everything. Yeah. We have we have a uh, duration extra white on the wall. We have pro classic extra white on the trim, and then we have pro classic um, semi gloss on the ceiling. On the ceiling, I mean, semi gloss on the ceiling. People don't like that typically, so it's created quite. You know a what that's like, <laughs> Carla? Think about when you do your eye makeup and you start with a base like a, a bright white to do your canvas on top of. And then you like do like maybe like a um, a little light brown in your crease. And then you do like a darker on your um, lid. That's exactly what you guys just did using those three different tones to make one eye look pulled together. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And I feel I think that that's such a great idea. That's why I feel that the entire room blends in so well because we we didn't really overdo it. We we just used the same exact color, just in a different sheen. And it and gives it, it a just, different feel. It gives it a different feel. Yes. Totally. And nobody thinks about that. And it's a great money saver. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just to not have to, um, you know, buy buckets of paint that's going to be wasted. Right. Exactly. Right. And especially the what we did with the semi gloss and the ceiling is that we wanted the ceilings to be taller. We only have eight foot ceilings. Yeah. People think that we have ten and twelve foot ceilings, right. and we're like, no, we don't. We have eight only foot eight foot ceilings. So we decided to create that that illusion. Gene, that the illusion of being taller, taller by adding the semi gloss. It's just like raising the um, curtain rod. Yes. 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 <laughs> Um, okay. So speaking of, you know, like pulling it all together, we got the floors, we got the powder room, we got the laundry room. What about the first impression that everybody's going to see? I think that would be called mm, curb appeal. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Curb yes. appeal. Come on in. Come yeah. on in. So it's funny because we often talk about this. When we put the offer in on the house and it was accepted, um, we went by the house and took a picture of it, of course, like we would. I went straight to Photoshop. And I started adding contrast, scale, just tweaking the front of the house with a blank canvas and doing what we wanted to. So adding shutters to it, adding a black door, adding black uh, window frame or window um, flower boxes, just yeah. One thing that you don't notice from our posts and our reels is the location of our home is precisely on a curb, on a corner, and it's set a little bit higher yeah. than the, rest, the of the rest of the houses. So when you see this house, it looks a little big, bit more grand. Right? but it had several trees. Yeah, blocking it. Gigantic trees blocking it. Um, uh, light, the light fixtures were way too small they in were scale. Super small. There was no contrast. Um, balance of it from the left side to the right side was off. So just tweaking a lot of that. As a designer, I was like, I want to start with a blank canvas. So I, I started with Photoshop and said, what can we do right now? And when we buy the house, this is what we can do. And by the way, the the garage doors, that was probably, that yeah. was actually our first project. Yes. It was coming out of COVID. So we were like, okay, we don't know what's going to happen, how this is going to be, how long it's going to yeah. take to order new garage doors. Let's just paint them. Yeah. Let's just get it over with. Let's paint them. So we did. What we, did you paint them? What did they start as and what did you paint them? They were white, your traditional white pay or ideal door that we went on got um is sharon williams oh my gosh 
I forgot what tool is. It was, it, it was black. It's it's not iron ore, but it's no, like it's the blackest. Tri um, tricorn. Tricorn black. Tricorn That's black. what I did my bathroom in with. I know that color, tricorn, like pepper. I love it. Yeah, so we use tricorn black on the front door and the garage door. Wow. Yes. Right, it's little, such I'm, an update. Yes. yes. And when you and speaking of doing makeup, I don't know why this is my theme today, but it is. Um, when I see a house that doesn't have shutters, it makes me think of forgetting to do your eyebrows. Yes, or put mas or or <laughs> yes, or mascara. Like, why would you do beautiful eyeshadow and then not put the part on that like finishes it, which is the shutters or the lashes? I'm it's the saying. perfect add-on, in my opinion. It, it so well is... did you match the shutters to the garage door and the front door black, tricorn? Yep. Yes, that's exactly. Perfect. Love yep. it. Talk about pulling it together. Yes. Yeah. Put a new storm door on it. It was black. So Yeah, the just... storm door was, was... a big no-no. It, it didn't make right. any sense, so we changed that, and we just made it all glass and also black to match the door. Took out a couple of so... trees. Oh, go ahead. You put up a couple oh, trees. That's oh, amazing. Trees, probably 40 year old trees that were just ready to come out. So. And also, do you know how much value that adds to your home? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just, I'm sure you do. <laughs> but, but here's the deal Is it just your home that you guys are doing, or are you guys like taking on projects now? What's next? We are doing our house first as a hey, this is our base. This is what we're doing. Um, in the past, I've done work. Um, for other houses in the past, um, not as a business, but just as side jobs. Um, but right now we're using we're using this as a launching pad to maybe get other houses. Maybe in the future. In the future. You no, know, never know. Yeah. Well, I think thirty thousand thirty thousand dollars, thirty thousand followers is a pretty good launching pad. Yes. yes. So we're we're getting there. We're getting there. We're yes. Very thrilled. We're very it's amazing. Glad. Thank you. Um, I wish you guys lived like right around the corner so that we could go and like have a drink right now because it was really fun being with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Likewise. Definitely. Um, let's continue to follow each other and keep doing amazing things. Sure because will. it's so important for people in our industry to share and to compliment and to encourage each other to keep doing what we're doing because just these little tidbits that you shared you know, the different scenes and the board and batten on the ceiling and the shiplap on the ceiling and just bringing in that sixth wall. You're going to like give so many people such inspiration and I just really commend you for that. So thank you for being with me, you guys. Oh, thank, thank you so much. We had a wonderful time. Thank, thank, you. thank you for having us. You're so welcome. You guys have a great rest of your week. You too. You too. Um, I can't wait to see the things that you're going to send to Brittany because we want to see all the pictures and the before and afters so that everybody can like understand what it is that we're actually talking about. Perfect. I mean, we know, but we need to. So, okay. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Jim and Carla Billings. And thank you, Pod Posse, for sticking with me once again and going through all of the design shenanigans. But they're so fun. I will see you next time. I'm going to sign off. This is Lindsay the Stager from the Floor Up Design Time. See ya. Bye bye. Bye, Ray. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this episode, please like, comment, or subscribe. If you don't like it, then f off. <laughs>